the report to you. I hope that you all received that. I had emailed that last week. So thank you very much, Mr. Chair, and to the board members for allowing us to come and speak with you this evening. Uh, the deputy and I are proud to talk about the happenings at Hampton Fire Rescue. Um, tonight we'll summarize 2017 and let you know what the department has been doing in the first days of 2018. <clears throat> Hampton Fire Rescue was very fortunate in 2017 to fill all open positions. Fully staffed, we're also very fortunate to not have suffered any long-term injuries this past year. Since our last visit, we've purchased a 2000 Pierce engine pumper. Deputy Kennedy has been working to make this vehicle ready for deployment. In general, this is a good rig. It has required some special attention, especially the transmission. It is, after all, an 18-year-old vehicle. But it pumps exceptionally well, and the groups have been training on it in the last three weeks. The 2002 Smeal HME pumper, formerly known as Engine 2, was purchased in September by Hampton, New York, Volunteer Fire Department, where they uh, told us she's going to live out her last days doing approximately 400 calls a year. So, When we were here in September, we had come off a rather light summer, reflected by a 9% de decrease in call volume. The gap has narrowed significantly since then. Through the fall and early winter, we answered a great many calls for service. Comparing 2017 to 2016, the difference narrowed to 2%. Based on the parallel comparison of how the summer season affected all of the local businesses, I believe this demonstrates a relative increase in calls for service for our community. Despite the difference attributed to summer, which was definitely weather-related, we saw that throughout the year, our call volume equalized. Hampton as a community is becoming a busier place to work and live. We answered a total of 4,424 calls for service in 2017. <clears throat> the breakdown is as follows. 2,165 calls for fire and 2,259 calls uh, as patient contacts. The historical comparison, I provided a chart. I know that folks at home can't see that, but we are approximately um, equal for the last three years. Uh, we have been seeing a normal rise, and this continues. On the fire side of the house, we responded to a total of 20 structure fires in town. The most significant fire occurred in February in a single-story ranch-style home where we lost five dogs as a result of smoke and water. We extinguished a fire in the commercial structure located at 725 Lafayette Road. Quick work by our on-duty crew prevented the entire structure from, from becoming involved. Hmm. I, don't, I don't know. Oh, what. echo. Turn that I think, down. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's right, that fixes it. Several businesses were affected, but the, burnt, uh, the brunt of the damage was borne by Seacoast Coin and Jewelry. <laughs> this is pretty neat. This is like being yeah, a Fenway. <laughs> yeah. right. Hitting first up. Uh, several of the businesses located in the plaza required significant cleanup from the smoke, but they were open uh, a short time later. We responded to a great many mutual aid fires in 2017. A general alarm fire in Portsmouth at the State Street Saloon. Catalanos and Browns in Seabrook and a fatal fire in Northampton are only a few that the, crowd, uh, the crews responded to and performed with expertise and professionalism. During the last week of 2017 and through the new year, we responded to several fires in other communities and a small fire in Hampton. Unfortunately, the fire in, one fire in Seabrook was also another fatal fire where an elderly woman perished. Anecdotally, and these fires are still under investigation, but some of the fires we responded to were attributed to alternate um, home heating methods. So this is a good time to pause for a public service announcement and ask that everyone keep all of their combustible materials far from the electrical and gas heating appliances. In January, uh, we saw a very busy month for the fire side of the house. Mother Nature came calling with a short but powerful blizzard on January 4th, which caused Hampton Fire Rescue to perform several calls for rescue. Fourteen residents were assisted from their homes, four of them over ladders, to warming stations, as exceptionally high tides and storm surge brought water into their homes and knocked out power and utilities. We rescued 10 drivers of motor vehicles that had become submerged in several feet of water standing on the roadways. In total, we responded to 34 calls in one and a half days. Following these rescue and fire calls in the harsh weather conditions, we did our best to clean the apparatus. We used pressure washers to clean the undercarriage and the exterior of the vehicles. However, the high water seems to have caused a slew of electrical problems that we're working to resolve. The ladder truck is currently being serviced in Walpole and Engine 4 will be next and we'll, we feel this is directly attributed to the exposure to salt water and slush during that storm. We'll keep you informed of the status of the repairs as we move forward. Just before sunrise on January 17th, crews responded to a fire in a duplex on Johnson Ave. No firefighter injuries and no, residential injury, uh, no occupant injuries, however, a pet snake was lost during that fire. Fire calls are up uh, in 2018 by 37% compared to 2017 uh, in January for the same time frame. 
tomorrow and Wednesday, our ice rescue training will be taking place. Uh, we will be having five members trained to deliver the class to the remaining members of the organization. We call this Train the Trainer. This class will be delivered by Ocean Rescue Systems Incorporated, and it's the same company that has trained all of our providers as rescue swimmers for open water and rescue boat operators. May we never need to use this training. <coughs> On the emergency medical services side, we had a total of 2,259 patient contacts in 2017. There were 1,444 patient transports. Of these calls for service, 52 were for overdose. Hampton Fire Rescue has administered Narcan a total of 73 times, which has uh, included several patients that required multiple doses. Opiates remain a great concern. The New Hampshire Drug Monitoring Initiative has published a document that indicates that there were 395 deaths attributed to overdose in 2017, but 91 of these remain under investigation for toxicology, and we anticipate that number to rise. As it stands right now, in a race that nobody wants to win, Hampton is approximately average by comparison. There are three other communities and, and counties that are significantly higher, um, but this is, again, a race that nobody wants to win. Comparing January numbers from 2018 to 2017, we find that our call volume is up by 20% on the EMS side, with 189 calls uh, over last year's 157. The new year still demonstrates an opiate problem with seven overdoses suspected, an increase of 133% over last year. And as you would expect, Narcan has been administered a uh, 43% increase. Sadly, this year alone in January of 2013, uh, 2018, we've seen three fatalities. EMS Officer Denio has brought a new type of training to the department last month. In order to better understand the resources that exist for people who face addiction uh, and to learn about treatment options, he brought in two staff members from Safe Harbor in Portsmouth. Both are experienced educators and have experience with addiction and recovery. Their perspective is quite eye-opening, and after the first day, we thought it necessary, and we invited the Hampton Police Department to join, which they've taken up um, readily. It's being accepted very well by all crews. We're exceptionally pleased to report that more than 435 people have been trained in cardiopulmonary resuscitation, or CPR, in 2017, and we continue to train the community and students at WHS. It's our goal, again, to complete the entire uh, senior class. We continue to work with the Hampton Police Department to prepare for the deployment of EMS in the warm zone. The next phase of this training will be a full-scale exercise and anticipate seeing this in early spring. Again, may we never need this training. With the assistance of the town manager and this board, we executed a purchase order in, uh, for a new ambulance in December. We anticipate delivery in May. The power load system was purchased and was delivered to headquarters and is awaiting installation into the new rig. The Fire Prevention Bureau for, uh, performed 231 inspections, issued 186 permits, and collected $18,253.60 in fees in 2017. There is a table provided for year-over-year -year comparison. Uh, we're currently under last year's, uh, we're right at last year's uh, numbers. We're very close. Um, the construction phase, and I know that if you've seen Kevin from the building, he's telling you that how busy he is, and we are as well. What we're not seeing is the large-scale projects that have already come to town, 128 Ashworth, 180 Ashworth, uh, Cornerstone, Spring Hill Estates. For us, that's a larger, a larger fee base when they come in as a large project. In January, the Fire Prevention Bureau conducted 12 inspections, issued 10 permits, and collected $688.50 in fees. In 2017, there were 15 uh, display fireworks inspections. Our New Year's Eve display was canceled due to weather. Local hotels and motels continue to partner with Hampton Fire in conducting life safety inspections and making sure that their systems are inspected and functioning. During Fire Prevention Week in October, the Fire Prevention Bureau brought a message of safety in the home to an unprecedented 672 students from local schools and several home school students. The Penguin Punch um, preparations took place last week, and our fire prevention officer, as well as the deputy, were integral in that. And uh, it's my understanding, because you were there, deputy, that oh, yeah. they went off without a hitch. Yep. Great. Um, good crowd this year, too. Communications side of the house, Hampton Fire Alarm answered 24,903 phone calls in 2017. This translates to an average of approximately 68 calls per day. During an extreme windstorm in October, they answered 276 calls in two and a half days. They answered 193 calls in 36 hours during the blizzard at the beginning of the month. There were 2,261 phone calls to Hampton Fire Alarm in January of 2018, or a 22% increase over the 1,854 <coughs> calls in 2017, same time period. For the administrative side of the house, Hampton Fire Rescue has submitted for a FEMA Assistance to Firefighters grant for the replacement of obsolete radios and um, equipment and pagers. 
They're, these are all 16 years old. This is the same equipment requested in last year's AFG with a modification of pagers added to the, instead of the, and the portable radios removed. This grant was initially supposed to be opened in August, but was continu continually delayed due to the FEMA response to the areas affected by uh, severe weather in the southern regions, all of the hurricanes. The funding opportunity opened about three weeks ago and closed on February 2nd. The total request was for $68,950. We're grateful to the board for their foresight and inclusion of the AFG grant in the block acceptance you perform annually. Our computer aided dispatch and record keeping software, are also known as IMC, was inaccessible to headquarters station for two weeks due to hardware failure. Um, this occurred as a result of exposure to the elements. We used two microwave towers, uh, one located at headquarters, one down at the police station antenna, and they communicate directly. Both microwave transmitters were replaced and uh, we're able to enter data once again. But we're very grateful to Seabrook Fire for their assistance. They, they lent us their new ladder truck, towel ladder, to, um, for a portion of the day as ours was down for service with electrical problems. The backlog from those two weeks has taken several days to enter. We did hire fire alarm operators in to perform the call entry down at the beach station, which caused some unanticipated overtime but was necessary to avoid losing that data. We're hopeful that the community votes in the affirmative to allow the purchase of the new software with an information technology warrant article on this ballot uh, this year. We're seeking to replace the antiquated software with modern software that is able to properly be queried and used to generate reports. It will be used for our computer-aided dispatch and site file storage as well. It will be hosted in the cloud, which will reduce the reliance on microwave technology for report writing. And if you will notice in the uh, documents that I passed out just now, you'll see a discrepancy in calls for fire service. At the beginning of the month, the report ran with 2,165 calls. Currently, it's running with 2,157. Somewhere, eight calls get dropped. That is a known glitch in the system. It's a gremlin, if you will, in the system with IMC, and it may be as a result of some of the data that might be lost due to transmission. Thank you very much for your consideration. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for your report, Chief and Deputy Chief. I don't have any questions. I just wanted to say thank you and the first responders for that day. I wasn't here, but I saw the video clips and the trucks going through the water and you guys out there taking people out of their houses. So it's just good to know that Hampton can always depend on its fire and police departments. <coughs> Man, thank Thanks. You. Thank you. <clears throat> how many times are we going over to the, the, the new Seabrook ER? Do we, uh, are, we, are we utilizing that? We are. Um, initial, obviously, that, that came on board January, uh, June 1st, I'm sorry of 2017. We saw a steady increase and uh, it accounts for approximately 20% of our call volume right now to be transported to that location. So I tell you that, that, that obviously it's less time to go over there I would think wouldn't it be? It is yeah. and it's a, it's a great turnaround as well. Uh, we see our crews returning quicker. Um, we're still spending about 51% of our transports are going to Exeter. The remainder is going to Portsmouth Regional um, about 30-31% and then 20% to Seabrook. I took, I took my wife over there the other day, and it's quite a facility over there, what they have over there, compared to what we've had in the past. It's an excellent facility. So. It really is, and they have all the capabilities. Yeah, yeah they do. They yeah. do. I, it, it was really good, so it's good to see we're utilizing it. Absolutely. Thank you. Mr. Griffin. No, good report. Thank Thanks, you. Sir. Mr. Bean. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Chief, Deputy Chief. Uh, Collective bargaining unit, you've got uh, a, a unit that's up on the ballot. Uh, we do. Uh, you please share your enthusiasm uh, and uh, advocate for that raise. I certainly would, and I thank you very much for the opportunity. <coughs> so Local 3017 represents our uh, supervisory unit, and that includes the four captains, the four lieutenants, the deputy chief, um, two department secretaries, the EMS officer, and the fire prevention officer. They're the ones who are on duty every day. Um, the <coughs> captains and lieutenants, they, they're responsible for the safety of their crews. They're responsible for supervision of all of their day-to-day -day activities. Uh, they're also the ones that are showing up at your house. And they're responsible for customer service. I think they do a tremendous job, and they have been working hard um, at maintaining professionalism throughout. The deputy chief was the former president and is happy to have relinquished those duties now. Taking that hat like off. Certainly, yeah. No, <laughs> <laughs> if you'd like to talk a little bit on that, by all means. No, they're just a bunch of uh, really hardworking guys that um, I'm very proud to call my brothers, uh, to support them wholeheartedly. Um, and I'm hoping that this uh, my hometown of Hampton will support them as well. And get out there and vote for their contracts. 
Thank you. And, and I know the board shares that enthusiasm and those accolades. And I would say that uh, on a, a day-to-day basis, there's 15,000 people that they are responsible for for life safety. In the summertime, that is upwards of 100,000 people. And there uh, is literally billions and billions of property uh, at risk that um, you stand ready to uh, um, protect uh, in, a, in a moment's notice, so thank you for that. Shifting gears, um, we met with Aquarian this morning briefly. We've had this discussion before, but I would request um, uh, on behalf of the board, Mr. Chairman and Chief, uh, your exact cost for what, it, uh, what it's costing to include uh, rolling stock uh, to shovel out the hydrants that are the property of Aquarian. And if you could get that to the town manager, that would be great. Thank you, gentlemen, for your service. Thank, thank you, Mr. Thank Chairman. You. Thank you. Uh, and a couple questions. Number one, you said you had no serious injuries this year. Correct. Right. So that's most likely attributed to the training that you're doing and the equipment that you're purchasing. That's absolutely accurate. So I think that it, it one, um, we, you also have to take into account the, the whole scope of it. So first, we were very fortunate. Captain Cutting had done some research and brought in a, a group of people to do some lifting training. And these people were body mechanics experts. Um, that was late 2016. They came in, they spoke to all four groups, spoke about how to properly lift, and we saw, uh, I think that we're seeing that pay dividends now. Um, we use the power load system daily, which we were present to ask you for uh, last time we were here, and that power load system does the lifting into the back of the ambulance, which was attributing to a lot of back and shoulder injuries for us. Um, now we'll have two ambulances equipped when this new one arrives. I believe that that has a, a lot to do with it. And we have to look at the fact that last winter, uh, for what it's worth, was not a tremendously difficult winter. We didn't have the feet of snow that we had the winter previous to that. So whether it was a shoveling injury and or carrying down somebody from the stairs and having, you know, coming out on snow, um, I think there was a lot of factors that go into it, but I certainly think that the risk management approach that we're taking is starting to pay dividends. Yeah, I think that's important. I think it's important for people to realize that when the fire department comes in or the police department comes in asking for money for training, that the payoff... The return on the investment is huge, absolutely. But because it's much more expensive to have somebody out than it is to have every than to do proper sure. training. Sure, and the and the incalculable cost of somebody who's out injured and not not able to do not only their job but family functions. You know, if you're laid up, and I think that Mr. Bridal was most recently the one out of the board who's been laid up the longest. You know how hard it is. If you're hurt, you're unable to do anything even at home. So that is something that we can't even attribute a cost to. Um, when we start to think about how much it costs to backfill and cover overtime, it's exceptionally expensive. Great. I have one other question. Is yes, Marine sir. One functional in the winter? In yes, the absolutely. Yes. And do you ever get calls in the winter? And Typically less, uh, significantly less. There's less people using the water. Yeah, right. Um, but it's not unheard of, and I do believe that we had one. In the last six weeks, I do believe that Marine One has gone on a call. Um, we do anticipate, and I know that we executed at the end of the year, a purchase order for the, the starboard side engine of Marine One. Um, the vendor that we use takes the month of January off as their vendors to, they're also dealing with boat shows. We anticipate that come middle of February, they're going to be taking that water, uh, taking it out of the water, bringing it down to their facility and installing that motor. Very good. Thank you very much for your Absolutely. Support. You guys do a great job. Thank, Thank you. you. Nothing further? Nothing. Thanks, guys. Thank Have a great you. night. Thank you. All right, Chief. Good night, XO.